Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon and my 12 days of Christmas. Today I'm going to be giving you my top 12 board game apps. So these are apps you can play on, you know, generally I play on my iPad. Uh, some of these work really well on your, your phone as well. Most of these are available on both Google and um, the iOS store. Also a lot of them are available on Steam if you want to play on PC. But these are digital implementations of board games before i jump into that though i do want to i didn't put this on the list so uh, i just wanted to cover this now marvel snap has really taken me by surprise i've been playing a ton of marvel snap i think a lot of people are if you're not familiar with marvel snap it's essentially a card game where you're just uh, area control you're trying to control two out of three locations as you play cards down certain ones have like ongoing effects or on reveal effects um it's only played over six rounds and you only have 12 cards in your deck so it's super fast three to five minutes per game um but a lot of things happen a lot of you know calculations and additions and and, and um you know power values can change up and down a lot and so th this one is probably never going to see a physical copy of the game there would be too much you know trying to keep up with stuff in your head and adjusting things it just wouldn't work but this really is just like a card game, kind of like, you know, a Magic the Gathering or Pokemon or something like that. Um, it just really is, can only be presented in a digital way. But it's free to download, free to play. You obviously can put money into it, and that's what they want you to do. But I haven't put a cent into it, and I've been playing quite a bit and having a lot of fun with it. So go check out Marvel Snap if you care to. But the rest of these on this list are all versions digital versions of actual board games that you can play a physical copy of if you prefer my rankings for the most part are based on a how fun the app is to play how good of an implementation is but also do i prefer playing the app version over the board game version so number 12 we have raiders of the north sea uh, and most of these i've tried to put the little icon that you would see in the store so you can you know some people that they want to make sure they're downloading the right thing because so many things out there have you know similar names but anyways uh raiders of the north sea is the digital implementation of the board game by the same name by garfield games this one has a uh a really great tutorial for if you want to you know learn how to play the game also there's some really fun animations um the game plays exactly like the board game does uh, just with those little animations added in is really nice. Sometimes it's nice to be able to see the whole board when you're playing the physical version. You kind of have to scroll up or down on the app version, but this one works really well um, and uh, is a great implementation if you want to a, learn how to play the game or constantly be playing against other players when you just would normally play solo, things like that. Number 11 is terraforming mars so i actually don't own big box terraforming mars anymore because i was so taken with uh aries expedition and the uh, you know just more compact nature of the game plus i have terraforming mars the app which is not the prettiest app by any means and that's probably why it's lower down the list here but it functions perfectly fine um it is very you know uh procedural looking you know everything is very sharp edged and you know only going to show you what you need but it does work well um the you know the graphics are really high end and you know plays very smoothly obviously their you know setup is zero and you know the shuffling of decks and things like that and all the cards you have to manage all of that's taken care of in the app so this is a, a great representation of a great game Number 10 is going to be Deep Space D6. So this is actually not an official uh, version of the board game. This is done by a fan. This is like a fan-made variant, so he cannot charge you for it. This is free to download on the App Store and look for this, you know, D with a 6 in it, uh, simple symbol. But you can see here that it, you know it's a very simple there's not any flashy um iconography or artwork or anything like that in the game but it's perfectly fine but it works perfectly well it does everything that the board game does 
uh, or that, you know, it's it's really kind of a, just a small roll and write game. Um, but it does everything that, that the physical version of the game does, presents it to you in a format that everything kind of fits on the screen at once, works very well in portrait mode. I really like to play this one on my phone when I'm just looking to kill time. 10 minutes or less and you can knock out a game so if you're standing in line at the you know the bank or the dmv or something like that this is a good one to have on hand especially because it's free number nine <clears throat> is scythe digital edition so scythe's digital edition a is a great way to learn the game it's got a great tutorial in it um it also you know functions just like the board game would it allows you to play against uh kind of simulated opponents versus the ai if you're playing solo also you know you can change the look of the board you can change you know act like you've painted your meeples or your miniatures you can take that skin on or off you can play with just you know the basic ones or you can deluxify everything just by clicking things up um yeah this one just works really well it looks and feels just like the board game you know a lot of times people still prefer to play the physical version and if i was playing multiplayer i still definitely would get out the physical version but this is just a great implementation of a great board game again number eight number eight is one deck dungeon so this is i've covered one deck dungeon several times already in my list and um, for solo games, for dice games, and as a dice game, I really do like rolling the physical dice, that, that tactile feeling. But what One Deck Dungeon does is a lot of the bookkeeping of A, just giving you your dice pool, what it's supposed to be at the beginning of every round without having to count up all of the icons that you have to the left of your uh hero character because throughout a round you can change die you can turn in blue dice to give you black dice or maybe you know spend a potion there to get an extra die so your dice pool at the end of a round isn't necessarily what it should be it's not your standard dice pool so there is a little bit of bookkeeping afterwards of saying okay how many red dice do i get how many blue dice can i get and that that number can be quite big near, throughout the game also when you're playing the um digital version it does a really good job of telling you all right here's what you're here's what you could get out of this it, your item is going to be a blue die or your xp would just be two all of this information is on a card in the physical version but they just display it right there in front of you makes it very easy to make your decision as to whether you want to go in and take on this trap or exit out and go on somewhere else there is also, uh, you know, the, the dice rolling animation for the game, I know this sounds silly, but is satisfying as far as the animation goes. It's not quite the tactile feeling of rolling physical dice, but it works. It's not like it just, they actually appear to roll on the screen, bounce around, and then they just shrink down and are, are settled. It's not like uh, the numbers just change inside a, a square. Number seven. <clears throat> wingspan digital edition so the reason why this one is high up on the list again it's a great implementation a digital implementation of a great board game um i still prefer the physical version but this one is just a really pretty app to look at as you change through the you know uh, I generally prefer to play where I can see my whole board, you know, so this brown um, board here in the lower right hand corner. So I can see all of my birds out at once, just like you would in a game, but you can zoom out and just look at each individual uh, area, you know, the water area, the grassland area, or the forest area at once. And the camera in the background kind of pans around and changes scenery. The, the birds all make sounds when you click on the cards. Um, there's just little animations, little movements, just stuff that you're never going to get in the physical version that just makes it really almost relaxing to play Wingspan Digital Edition. Um, I also have this one not only on iOS, but I also have it on the Nintendo Switch. It works really well there as well. So again, this is just another really great digital implementation of a really great game. It's very pretty to look at, um, you know, 
if you turn it on you can it'll read out the little flavor text to you so it's just a very immersive experience um, and works well if you're like traveling or on the road or something like that and um, can't get out the physical version <clears throat> number six number six is cartographers so Cartographers is not a big game to begin with. It's a game that can easily travel um, and one that certainly if I'm playing with a group, I'm going to get out the physical version. But if I'm just playing by myself, it's almost too easy to get out the digital version. Um, it plays so quickly. Um, it also is far more colorful. Yes, I could get out colored markers or colored pencils to do my drawings on the physical copy but this one just makes it very easy to drop and twist and turn those polyomino shapes and drop them in there and your map always looks nice and neat and clean and colorful everything is presented to you in a, a you know fashion where everything's there in front of you and it all fits on a, a portrait screen really well i can play this on my iphone so this is another one like deep space d6 that if i'm just trying to kill um a few minutes this one plays probably even quicker than deep space d6 and you know it's just great to have on your phone it is not free like deep space d6 is but again it's a great implementation makes it very portable it was already portable to begin with but now it's extremely portable and extremely quick to play and that's cartographers number five is everdell So Everdell Digital Edition came out uh, earlier this year, and I still prefer the physical version of the game. And as of right now, the digital edition doesn't have any of the expansion content. But this is a absolutely gorgeous app. It technically, it, all of the artwork is the same. It has all of the artwork, but there is, you know, things moving in the background. There's little animations, movements. Your critter meeples are actually critters that jump off of your little tree stump and run to their location and, and stand there and interact with it um if you you know are on the fence about purchasing everdell this would be a great way to experience the game um also one thing i've highlighted here right in the center is that the app gives you challenges so this is something you're not going to get in the base game and why this is you know so high on my list even though i generally would prefer to play the physical version is the challenges give you slightly different changes to the rules or a different setup maybe it cuts around out entirely or a season um and you still need to be successful can you beat the challenge and then it's like a you know super version of the challenge these are really fun these are how i prefer to play because i know i can just play a standard game of everdell with the my physical copy so if i'm going to play digitally i'm going to kind of change things up and get an experience i cannot get from the physical version um so this is just a again a great app which is a excellently done version of a excellent board game Number four is Street Masters. So Street Masters is a Blacklist Games product, and I have gotten on my soapbox often about Blacklist Games and my, oh, their struggles. So Street Masters is, uh, I actually don't own a copy of Street Masters. I have uh, had pre-ordered some copies of Street Masters, including their one that they haven't released yet, Tide of the Dragon, which I should have by now um, and is sitting in China somewhere because Blacklist Games can't afford to send it to me. And that's a whole nother story. But um, so right now, this is the only way I can play Street Masters, um, but it works really well. Um, the miniatures are just represented by tokens on the screen, but I think that works better than trying to represent 3D versions of the miniatures. Um, what the app does really nicely, though, is from playing other MDS games by the Sadler Brothers, there is, you know, bookkeeping in between your turn where you're having to flip over the top card, usually of various decks, and going through those cards to play through the AI you know the the villain or the boss or whoever it is and usually there's like a stage deck and a boss deck and a minions deck something like that so what this app does is 
takes care of all that for you. And you can even set it up so that you either have to, it does it for you on a single click at a time. So you just keep pressing the screen. You can see exactly what's happening. Or if you already know how to play and you pretty much know what the AI is gonna do when you see a card, you know what happens. You can set it up so it just quickly plays through. It doesn't instantly do it. You can still see the person moving around, but it speeds up gameplay so much because it just says, all right, Here's the AI turn. It's like another human player sitting across from you controlling the AI and they're a master at knowing what needs to happen with the AI. So it can zoom by very fast, shrinks the game time down uh, dramatically if you do that. Um, and so, yeah, this was a really good implementation. I, I purchased this game when I was, you know, very excited about what Blacklist Games was doing and was... Um, anticipating my copies of Street Masters, and now I don't know if I'm ever gonna see them. So this may be the only way I ever get to play Street Masters. Number three. <clears throat> Number three is Le Havre. So these last three are definitely ones that I prefer to play the app version. Um, mainly because the physical version can be very fiddly to set up and play through. So La Havre is, um, you know, definitely one of those. So normally set up, there's so many little tokens that, you know, you have to set up uh, for La Havre. Same thing, I also have here a screenshot of La Havre Inland Port, which is the kind of La Havre dual or two-player only version of La Havre both of which play very nicely on the app um, and completely remove all that fiddliness of setup and having to keep track of all the, you know, the cardboard tokens and things like that. Um, and also allow you to play against, you know, a simulated real person versus the AI, which is what you would do in the board game. Um, it, you know, is presented in a, a very nice way. Um, it's not overly flashy. The artwork is the same. Some people really like this artwork. It's okay, in my opinion. But again, just the ability to get, you know, Hav basically wouldn't make it to the table or doesn't make it to the table because of its fiddliness. But that version allows me to play it, set it up instantly, and play it quickly. Up next, number two. In similar fashion is Castles of Burgundy. <clears throat> so again, Castles of Burgundy can be somewhat of a fiddly game to set up. There's a lot of you know cardboard <laughs> involved in the game. Also, the app version is a lot prettier than the actual physical version. The physical version is very bland, very dry looking. Um, this one, the tutorial is okay. Um, it could be better, certainly. So don't necessarily use this to learn how to play the game, but um, you know, there's the, the this fun, I don't know what you call the um, irising mechanic, but you're, you know, between your turn and the other player's turn, this thing, Iris is open and your thing comes and flips over. It's just a cool little transition animation. Um, but your, your tiles in your estate appear to be three-dimensional. Um, yeah, it just is so much better looking and easier to play the app version it's you know like why would you not now if you're playing multiplayer more than likely you're going to want to play the physical version but i mainly play solo and it's just so much easier to play it on the app and at number one in similar fashion to the last two is Gaia Project. So Gaia Project is another app that came out uh, earlier this year. So it's kind of new. Some people may not know you can get a digital version of it. You've always been able to, or not always, but for a long time, you've been able to get a digital version of Terra Mystica, and now you can play Gaia Project. So Gaia Project is another heavy Euro game that's got a lot of setup, a lot of pieces, um, and could feel very fiddly to get to the table. And obviously playing the app version instantly takes care of that um the solo ai works really well um i always appreciated the way the solo ai functioned um in the, the physical version and I, I don't think i don't remember i always play against like a simulated second player i don't think they have where you can play against the ai but maybe they have or maybe they've added it 
Um, some people prefer to just play exactly like they would physical version, but in digital form. But this is another one that's just, you know, uh, represented very nicely. Um, you know, the artwork is the same as the, the physical game. The physical game, mainly it was just the artwork of the factions of the species, the races that was cool. And the rest of it was very sci-fi and, you know, whatnot. But, um, yeah, basically this one has taken over where it's like, if I'm feeling like I want to play a heavy Euro and I want to get Gaia Project out, I just get out my iPad and, and play it on my iPad because there's really no reason anymore for me to set up the, the physical version and take, you know, I could play an entire game of Gaia Project on my iPad before I could set up the physical version of the game. So, you know, I, I know some people say that may be a detriment to the board game industry, but... You know, I'm pretty sure the fact that I paid $10 for this version, this app, uh, some of it's going back to, uh, I guess, Capstone at this point or whoever, you know, has the rights. So anyways, I don't feel too bad about kind of giving up on physical versions when amazing digital versions like this are available. But anyways, that's going to do it. Um, there were two apps that I'm sure I'm going to hear People say, well, why didn't you choose this? So I did just want to throw out there. I had Spirit Island and Root on my list. They just were my 13 and 14 out of my top 12. Um, they just don't hit for me as well. They are great implementations of great games. Um, and Root digital version is an excellent way to learn how to play the game. Same thing with Spirit Island. Um, so both of them have excellent tutorials. I just am not on the same bandwagon as a lot of people. They are not like my top games to play solo or otherwise so they just didn't quite make the list but they are also great implementations digital imp implementations of excellent board games that you could go check out that's going to do it for my top 12 board game apps as part of my 12 days of christmas we are getting closer to the end here but we still got a few more videos to go so if you are enjoying them please consider giving them a thumbs up and uh subscribing to the channel once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.